All right, this is Al Bain, Al Bain for leather. Um, we're gonna talk about the Cobra NP4 Bell Skyver. And there's a little call out, NP4. And it's a Bell Skyver because this blade is in the shape of a bell. If you can see inside, there's the inside of the blade. And it's a bell shape. I'll make it spin for you. You can see it. Okay, now what you see here, this blue, you get a pointer, is the sharpening stone. And then this is the cutting edge of the bell. Okay, and this little green belt is the, the belt that turns the stone. Okay, and this is an edge guide. I've got it set up so it's cutting at about three eighths of an inch. And this beautiful little device is the presser foot and here's the presser foot lifting system okay so the presser foot lift lock there you can see the presser foot try to exercise it there you go it's going up and down and then underneath the presser foot right here is the feed roller and then right here where the pointer is pointing is the business end of the blade so if you're not careful that thing will definitely shear your fingerprints clean off between this space right here okay if you slide your finger across there it's going to cut you unforgivingly okay so you have to be very very aware of that um, this knob right here is going to adjust the pitch of the roller so the roller if you adjust the knob see it brings the rear end away from the blade you, the way I use it and I'm sure there's very very many ways um, but the way I use it, I want the roller real parallel and level with the blade. Okay, so um, yeah, like that. Okay, so then the presser foot for me, again, is going to be real parallel. A little deeper on one end than the other, but um, it's kind of a voodoo thing. You, you figure it out as it goes. You look at the cut, the result of your scrap cut, and uh, you move along like that. So this knob here pitches the total height of the roller and it adjusts it in parallel so you see it'll drop it away in parallel so it's on a spring here you can see if I just pull on it it'll pull away but this fancy little spring mechanism has got a bunch of teeth and you can adjust how much tension I like it on about the second one okay so by turning this knob it'll permanently lower it by turning it the other way it'll permanently raise it and then this again is the pitch and then this is the tension device for the pitch um, I've never had to mess with it so I don't know how to deal with it this knob here has got a scraper that's living inside here that kind of helps push the scrap away and we'll move to the inside and look I don't know if I can get a shot of it because of all this gadgetry in the way and here it is right here you can see, I'll try to get the pointer in there. So there it is, this guy. So by loosening that knob that we just mentioned a moment ago, you can push it in or push it out. I haven't really found a sweet spot, so I just kind of leave it. But um, as the scrap goes, gets generated, you start hanging up and stuff, so you want to find the best place for it. Now, interesting thing that this machine has is a wiper. I don't think I can show it to you. Oh, there it is. Right here, this device here. And it's on a spring, so it kind of pushes the, the scrap away and down. So that it falls into this little hole here. And then coincidentally, that hole's going through the table and into this little drawer, which is kind of nice so that the the junk isn't falling on your foot that's located on the pedal right below you see so this middle knob here adjusts how far away the grinder wheel is from the blade okay so I've got a little label piece of tape and some writing on it imagine that okay turn it counterclockwise and it brings the roller itself this blue guy that we mentioned earlier closer to the to the belt, I mean to the knife, and then inversely by turning it clockwise, it's going to push it away. Now this knob, it's really interesting how this one works, but it adjusts how far 
the bell knife is away from the roller and presser foot. Okay, so I like my blade re real close to the edge of uh, the presser foot. You see, like there's almost no light in between. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, so as the blade wears from grinding on it, you have to uh, adjust it, get closer and closer. So, um, or further away, because you don't want it rubbing on the rest of the mechanism. If you see right here, the edge of the frame of the machine and the blade are pretty close. So if you unintentionally get it too close, you want to back it off. And this is the adjuster here. So um, the neat thing about it is once it's adjusted, you back it off a little bit. And then it takes about 10 revolutions of this knob before it'll get and engage the other direction. See, it's turning really free. Okay. I can turn it with my finger. But then once it gets to the end of that 10th revolution, now it's hanging up and it now becomes really stiff. So by turning it now, it will adjust the blade away. And then by going back 10 more revolutions, it'll start making it go forward. Okay. So it's set up so that when you're done adjusting, you kind of put it in the middle and then you can't unintentionally move the blade, which um, could ca cause a catastrophic malfunction by shoving the sharp end of the blade into the frame of the machine or whatever like that. So once you're done adjusting the position of the blade, put it into a neutral location in the middle of the wind. Okay. So there's that thing. Now this lever here, it engages or disengages the cutting, I mean, I'm sorry, the sharpening stone. So that blue stone again, this one here, in this condition, the, it's disengaged. So as you run the motor, nothing happens. But when you pull this out and drop it into this position, then it will start rotating the, the uh, stone and then turn this guy in and approach the blade and then start grinding, okay? So I'm gonna put it back in the off position. And over here is your typical hand wheel that you would find in a saw machine, okay? So it rotates. We very, very rarely ever have to use our hand because there's a servo motor connected to it. Okay, the servo motor rides up and then rotates the blade, okay? I mean, I'm sorry, rotates the hand wheel, which in turn drives all the mechanisms along the inside. Okay, so there you go. Basic overview of the MP4. Um, here we go. Let's uh, talk about this knob here that I didn't mention. Get the pointer out. Now this guy here, what it does is it holds the feed dog in place. So by re loosening it, okay, and then shifting this little hook mechanism right here, this little guy, I'm going to try to do it without blocking everything with my finger. Uh, doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. So it swings away, see? Okay. It swings away and exposes this little pin, okay? This guy right here. By pushing this pin out and through the presser foot, you see the other side of the pin here. Okay, now you can pull it out. And now it's out of there. And then swing this little spring out. And the presser foot comes off. Okay, so there's the presser foot. These things typically come with a variety of feet, different widths and different lengths and different pitches, and they're going to affect the way the machine actually cuts. Okay, I use this long one because I don't want to have a real short one out there like this guy, okay, and have a ton of excess blades sticking out just for safety reasons because I don't want to shave off my fingerprint sliding across that blade. Okay, now you can get a little bit better view of what's going on with the roller. Let's uh, drive the machine for a second. You can see the roller spin and see the blade. So that feed roller is going to our right while the blade is moving away from us. Okay, so you might ask yourself, what is that weird little black dot on the blade, that one? Okay, so what we end up doing is we take, today it's going to be red, take a red Sharpie, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on the business end of the blade, okay? So I'm just going to cover the blade with a bunch of red ink, 
Okay. Now, so now I have a visual to tell me how much I've ground away as I'm sharpening. So why don't we do some sharpening real quick? So I'm going to engage the blade. I mean the the stone. Okay. And start spinning the motor at full tilt, wide open. Okay. And by using this knob, I'm going to bring the stone closer. So I'm going to move over here, and hopefully you can see. And there's the stone. The pulse system's running and I'm going to drive the stone into the blade. Very, very slowly, you don't want to jam it in. Now you see how it's starting to spark? Okay, I'm going to turn off the lights so you can see. Okay, it's starting to spark, and protruding from the side of the machine is a little bit of spark. This is practically the end of the amount of spark that you want to see at the very end of the cutting, of the sharpening. Okay, so now, you see that there's no effect on the ink marks. Okay, so I'm going to act, engage more cutting of the roller. So now it's pretty bright. Okay, so inevitably a lot of that ink is going away. You see that? So when all the ink is gone and all the sparks are gone, we're basically done. So here we go. This is going to take about five minutes. I'm going to pause right now until we get done. Okay, we're back. So now you see that the sparks are diminished by a great deal, okay? So that's the first approach to the to the cutting, and you see most of the red pigment is gone from the blade. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the uh, stone advance and very gently apply a little more until the sparks come back again. I mean, this is only one or two degrees rotation on this knob. Okay, so we'll wait until those sparks diminish away. I'm gonna pause again for you so we don't make this long and boring. Okay, we're back. So now we see that there's barely any sparks coming out of the side of the machine and the pink pigment is pretty much gone. Okay, so we're gonna en engage the stone a little bit more and do the whole process for the third and final time. So here we go, we're on the roller advance or the stone advance knob. And I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny bit of rotation. And you see just a little bit, and the sparks are back. So here we go into our little pause moment again. Okay, we're back. Now you notice that all the sparks are pretty much gone. You can barely see them coming out from the side of the machine. Okay? If you look inside, there's still a considerable amount, but for all intents and purposes, the sharpening is basically done. And like any other knife, when you are sharpening one side of the knife, what ends up happening is you build up what's called the wire edge on the other side of the cutting blade. Okay, so we're going to take the blade dressing tool, a little stone on the end of a handle, and what we're going to do is very gently insert it into the space between the blade and the edge of the blade. And then simultaneously slide the edge of the stone into the inside edge and grind off the wire edge. It doesn't take a whole lot and we do these operations together. And before I turn off the machine and stop it, notice my foot has never left this pedal position for about 15 minutes at this point. So now I'm gonna rotate, ensuring that I go to the, the out position. So I'm gonna roll the stone away from the blade by turning this knob in the clockwise direction. So here I go, and listen for the difference in the tone. Did you hear that? It's no longer clicking away. And now I'm very confident that I can stop the motor. I'm gonna let my foot off the pedal. Okay, and look, we still have some of the red marks. Okay, in a typical situation, in a very dull blade, we would want to make sure that all that was gone. Okay, but I know that this blade is fairly sharp. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it alone at this point. I'm going to turn off the blade, I mean the, 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 the stone's rotation, by lifting this little lever up and then sticking it back into the hole. There's a pin that engages that little hole. Okay, and really quickly I'm going to reinstall the, the um, feed dog, or the, I'm sorry, the, the presser foot. It's got to slide in here. Give me one sec, I'll be right back. So real quick, putting this pin back in the side, 
and the top of the foot's got to ride against this pin up here. Okay, so it's going to go in there and push that little pin in there while the whole time pushing this little bracket out of the way. So now those are all together and then this little bracket slides over the, the cutaway in the end of that pin and then tighten it back up. Okay, so this pin in the back at the top is adjusted by this knob so the deeper you turn the knob it's going to push that pin out and push the tip of the presser foot forward and inversely the spring when it's up pushing against here is going to raise the foot so you see what's happening okay so now I'm just going to push the spring back into position and now that spring is pushing the top of the foot into that pin which in turn raises the front end of the foot and when I put it back down it's all level again okay so let's do a quick test cut got a piece of scrap right here I'm going to feed it in Okay, you see the, the scrap is all one thickness. Let's stick it in there. I've never done this one handed, but here we go. Nice, clean, smooth cut, you see? So when it stops behaving clean and starts making these weird, um, weird cuts, then we go redress the blade. So I hope this is informative for you. There's a few other little details that show up on that, that pitch adjustment knob. This knob here is going to tilt the foot. You probably can't see. And this little knob here just locks it so the vibrations and stuff don't change the angle. This knob is the pin retention. So by loosening this, it slides away from the pin. hard to do one-handed okay and then there's that pin from the profile back in and lock it down now this device here again is your edge guide and this knob here loosen and adjust it forward or back okay this guy right here um, let's go with the carriage so you can pull the whole carriage out for major cleaning operations and stuff like that and there's a whole complex belt pulley system located underneath this cover and that's opened through this knob here at some point. Okay, so let's talk about really quick what's going on underneath this cover. So you loosen this knob and then the cover slides clean off. Okay. So here you see basically what's known as the hand wheel and this belt goes down below the table and engages the motor. Okay. So this belt here drives um, the feed system and then this little green belt right here is the belt that turns the sharpening stone and there's a little clutch mechanism in the center here so when you move the stone engagement knob or lever you can see that the clutch moves it in and out okay so that's basically what the whole system looks like let's run it for a second Okay, now the stone is spinning and now it's off. You see? So, really simple system. It's got um, a couple different pulleys. You can adjust how fast the thing's running and whatnot by changing the position of the belt. See, so there's three here and three here. So, it just changes the, 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 the ratios. The leather machine company sets them up like this. Who am I to question? the big guys, but um, I'm sure that some people would have other configurations that they'd prefer. Anyway, this is Albane, Albane for leather, signing off. Uh, do me one last favor. Pay it forward. Thanks a bunch.